Shalom everyone and uh, welcome to another episode of The Upper Room. Uh, thank you once again for joining us. Uh, really thoroughly appreciate you taking the time to uh, to spend spend your time with us. Um, we've got a great, uh, great conversation in store for you uh, today. Um, arguably uh, one of the more controversial, uh, potentially dis- uh, divisive topics um, that's in there in the realms of Christendom. And um, it is a uh, very real conversation for me in the sense that it provokes ideas and thoughts and uh, biblical interpretation, which can be very challenging. Um, we appreciate that this is a, a subject that um, has many perspectives, uh, many ideas and thoughts behind it. But I believe that this is our attempt to uh, engage in some narrative, explore some themes, and to, uh, again, uh, create a conversation um, that has arguably taken place within the body of Christ previous to ourselves, but like a lot of uh, uh, things within within the faith, uh, we come to it fresh, and we then have to, to work our way through it uh, generationally. So uh, with that being said, uh, I'm joined by a very regular uh, guest and a familiar face, uh, Mr. Mr. Jackie Brennan. How are you doing? Hey, shalom, brother. Thanks for having me on your show. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's an honour really to come back on the show and what I lo- really love about um, what you're building here on the upper room is, uh, as, it's, as you've stated in the past, it's a discussional space where we can mediate with the word of God we can loosen and bind with the word of God and I always when in my studies when I'm looking at things I always like to imagine myself uh, casting uh, a fishing rod as far as I can and then you might reel it back in a touch a little bit more <laughs> bring it back to where if, uh, when you first cast it might not even be in view <laughs> um so yeah I, I guess I guess we've got the Torah portions on on the Almond House YouTube channel we're currently doing a, a midweek chronological gospel study which has been beautiful uh, we for the listeners online, we've been doing that with no technology. It's It's been really a blessing just to have that in its raw format, and that's been really edifying. Um, and what I love about the, the podcast, I guess, is, is the ability to challenge uh, dogmatic views uh, within uh, Christianity and, and, to be honest, just have a bit of fun with it. Yeah. And this is a, a, a subject which I was put on my heart many years ago, and I've... I've woven and out of it and compiled some notes and this is what I love about the upper room you know it lets let you know we can speak about parasites you know reptilian agenda (laughs) you know we can we can go all out on these things and look this isn't like a teaching this is just a discussion and an opinion and and to have have pushed the boundaries in these areas so that we can grow and to be pioneers in 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 the word but in in a controlled and safe environment and of course based on the word and um, yeah, so this this subject, martial arts in the Bible, sounds crazy, sounds wacky, almost sounds a little bit militant. Um, but yeah, I just want to say a bit of a disclaimer. I'm not here to invoke violence in any way, shape, or form today. The, the, the idea of this discussion is, is, to, is to have a greater understanding of the patriarchs and if we can glean anything from their day-to-day lives, what they had, and potentially a, a apply it to our lives. So, yeah, I just wanted to open with that. Yeah, and uh, I appreciate that, bro. And uh, I think one of the elements that um, I think is important is that... Um, as as men as disciples of Christ, we're we're still irrespective of our positions, uh, whether it be in ministry uh, or just in life. That there are topics, there are things that we need to work through and and to engage with and to actually come to a point of uh, understanding where uh, whether it's for our own personal lives, for our own walks, or even if it is uh, material that it may potentially be taught on. Um, and so I, I appreciate that you're in that unique space there, bro, of of being in a teaching space, but then coming into a neutral area in which you you can share things and you can walk through walk through things, uh, particularly in a, in, a, in a public uh, domain. It's it's a, it's a challenging environment. But with that being said, I think it's a great subject. I'm really looking forward to getting into it. Um, so with that being said, my uh, my first port of call with it. Um, when I say it, we say martial arts, and I want to put in into the hat 
self-defense, mm -hmm. combat, anything to do with a, a physical uh, interaction, sure. I guess, um, whether it be violent or non-violent, whatever you want to call it. But for me, my, my first portal call is is uh, is establishing the spectrum because there's clearly a spectrum um, whether you look at culture, history, uh, biblical narratives and things that have taken place in the scriptures. So I, I just want to pose this one to you initially, Jackie, with regards to the spectrum. So on one hand, we have just out and out pacifism that, you know, we aren't to engage with any form of violence that um, that's not something for anyone to to uh, to take part in and then if you go all the way through to the other end you've got the high-end entertainment ufc boxing you know mixed martial arts as a spectacle roman gladiatorial spectacle right and then we've got everything in between so how do you how do you view that spectrum and um I is this something that you've uh, seen yourself yeah i guess to begin with, it would be interesting to break down the, the, the title of this podcast, uh, Martial Art in the Bible. So what, what is a martial art? And a martial simply means um, anything in relation to combat or war. And art can be a, an expression of skill. So you can have an art in pretty much anything that requires a skill or putting your hand to something, something that can be mastered or, or perfected, an expression of human um, emotion in a sense and um, ability should I say more ability so we have martial art which is the uh, ultimately the art of war or the skill of war and yeah there is a massive range of where this can lie and on one hand we could potentially have legalized violence and on another hand um, we, we, we see that clearly throughout the Bible, the patriarchs went to war and our father, uh, Yahovah, God, he, he describes himself as a man of war. I've got a scripture here to read out to you. Exodus 15 verse 3, it says, The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. So this to me is saying that the Lord is a, is, is, a, is a man of war. And what does that actually mean? So when, when I'm talking martial arts, I think there's a, there's a natural fear. Um, and probably quite rightfully so, because when, when people maybe say that word in day-to-day -day life, martial art, they may think of some Himalayan monk up in the mountains, maybe practicing a, in a Far Eastern religion who's in a meditative state and it has all basically paganism attached to it, but martial arts simply is just um, uh, the, the, the skill of war, the skill of war, that's how I uh, believe it can be defined. So if we look at it this way, then when we're viewing the Bible, there is clearly a spectrum of, of violence. You know, we see that in scriptures that the Lord says, um, I hate those who are lovers of violence, but then in another breath, Yeshua is returning with his cloak dipped in blood. Mm -hmm. And he's very specific on how he's going to war with certain people. And there's going to be, um, in some of the prophets, there's blood that reaches up to the bridle of horses. So is that not violence? Well, it's all, of course, it's always the intent of these things. Um, Proverbs 16, 2, paraphrasing, it says along the lines of, uh, um, the, the, the ways of man is pure in his own sight. But Yahovah examines the spirit, or Yahovah examines the intent. So it, it, there is always that question of the intent behind. So I'm going to break down really just a little bit of martial arts that we see in the Bible, the the, the skill of war, um, because we we have been ill ill informed and in regards to just associating all martial arts with this, um, you know. Eastern religion, which which could be a pitfall for basically paganism and inviting spirits into your home, and that, and that, I think that is a natural defense, and I don't think there's any in inherently wrong with that. But if we um, label the entire of martial arts, then then what, what about God? What what form of combat was he um, training in, or or or, the, or or Abraham? Because I've got a few examples here in the word. We see Abraham had three hundred and eighteen trained men born in his own household and what was the purpose well later on they was used to rescue lot so the question is trained in what was the trained in 
Kung Fu Panda. Uh, no, he was clearly trained. Abraham wouldn't have stood for that. Abraham wouldn't have stood for any uh, paganism trained men in, in his camp. These was obviously um, skilled in a martial art which was used in, in, in a righteous sense to uh, defeat the surrounding nations. Uh, other examples of people who practiced in martial arts in the word. Uh, Moses, as we know, was trained in martial arts. He was a general of the Israelite army. One of the first instances that we see of this is that, he, unfortunately, he does use it in a wrong way, and he, he, he kills an Egyptian man um, who's abusing uh, the Israelites. But then late, shortly after, we see it used in a positive light. He turns up to the well, the seven Midianite women there, uh, shepherdesses, and he, he, he fends off the evil shepherds, and he's rewarded with that with a wife. And we know that that is a, is a beautiful story. Uh, God's... Um, um, signature is in it with the seven shepherdess at the well and he, he uses his his trained ability there to defend these these shepherdess so oh, of course the probably most famous uh, character in the bible who is trained in martial arts is david you know he 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 went from a shepherd boy to contesting goliath and then even into exile where he hid in the cave of adullam where he had his men with him and he trained to go to battle so in a sense, this this martial art, there is a warrior trait attached to our God. And yet, um, I'm all about speaking about deliverance, the spiritual realm. I'm all about um, fasting. I'm all, all about um, looking at these other applications. But today, I simply... We want to focus on this application. I'm not. Neg- that doesn't mean by any stress I'm neglecting all these other beautiful uh, attributes that we see in God's character. But this is the side of God's character that we can't attach. If we if we remove this um, character to Him, then that, there goes His heroism when He's coming back for His bride. So this is a um, a character and attributing God, which I believe uh, we do have a part in us. And this, uh, like all things, can be corrupted or used for good, and it can be channeled. In, in different ways. Uh, just a, a few other scriptures here. Um, psalm 144, uh, a psalm of David. Blessed be the Lord, my rock, who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle. So we accredit Yah here that he, ac- Yah, he actually gets instruction from the living high, the living most high God who trains his fingers for war. And I mean, when you think about it, this skill of war that, that our father has, it, his skill is clearly greater than than Hasatan. You know, Hasatan clearly has a, an ability in war too to reap destruction and have it. But our, our, our father is, is is more skilled and in tune with this and is a reflection um, through patriarchs of, of, of this ability. Now, of course, the probably go to what people will usually say was, "Well, that was back then." Yeah, How the, 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 con- the context the, the con- is con- going to uh, come back. Yeah, of but, course. Yeah, yeah. Go on. Did you want no, to no, say no, something? No, 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 no. By no, no. By all means. Yes, yeah, of course, it is. Context is king. You know, I, I, that that's that's the go to phrase I always like to say. And it, again, this is why I'm not I'm not here to try and incite a rebellion in Birkenhead <laughs> Park and and and. and <laughs> start training some men up to go and take down the king no way this is not what i'm trying to say but what i am saying is it's like okay wow so these men did have an up- upbringing and for me we see that abraham had trained men okay is this a skill that's i, I believe this is a skill that's been passed down through f- through it manhood from generation to generation to be trained in an art of combat to to, to fight off these surrounding nations okay yet yeah, we may not be in a war today uh, in terms of necessarily a physical but is there still applications from the training, from the self-control, these elements of the of the spirit that we can ap- uh, apply to our own lives? Right. Now, the first question is when, when we start speaking about war is, well, if that was a different time. But I don't know about you, Daz. I feel like I'm in a war pretty much every yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. You know, we are in a war and, and this is this is the real reality of it. There's a war we're fighting on two fronts. We're fighting in the spiritual realm, we're fighting against the principalities, but we're also fighting against the flesh. Now my concern is with Christianity particularly in the West, is that they've hyper-spiritualized absolutely everything. We've went from a a, 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 a very grounded faith, um, what we see in the Torah, to an over-spiritualization. Now, don't get me wrong, I always give way to the spiritual. I understand that that is, you know, flesh and blood will not inherit the kingdom. That is where we're initially going to go to. And 
um, healing what most definitely comes through healing of the spirit, and then this can, this can come um, outwards uh, through the through the flesh. I'm not by any any sense neglecting the spiritual realm. However, we need to not be coming to this danger of neglecting the physical uh, elements of this walk. Look. The father tells us, here's clean and unclean animals. He's, he's bothered about our diet. Absolutely. You know, there's a physical element to this walk. There's a baptism in water, which is a physical element, and also by fire. We see in the Israelites when they go to war in the wilderness, sometimes we see them go through brute force, head-on combat. Other times we see Moses, and he's getting his arms lifted up by Aaron and Hur next to him as the, as the Israelites are fighting um, the enemies. And, and that's a spiritual war, and as his hands um, uh, sort of decrease, that the Israelites was losing in battle, and uh, as the supported and the prayer gets more intense, they start winning. But then in another sense, we see fiery serpents attack the camp. And how are they defeated? They're actually f- defeated, not by prayer. Well, probably in conjunction with prayer, but with a physical element, with the bronze serpent on mm-hmm. a pole. So we see this, this, this par- parallel, and even when we get down to King David, King David didn't pray for a lightning bolt to come down and strike Goliath and kill him. There was a physical element. Moses still went to war and, uh, with, with these um, uh, giants, entities, Nephilim. So I think I think it's very naive to to dismiss the the, the physical side of this walk. Now, let me give you an example of how the physical realm can affect the spiritual realm. Now, the go-to usually is we always look at this in sort of negative connotations. We say, oh, well, you know, if you have fornication, that's clearly going to affect your spiritual man. Yeah, of course it is. There's, there's, there's a list of negative things we can do in the physical which will affect the spiritual, but there's also a list of positive things that we can do in the physical that will affect the spiritual also. And this is what I, I kind of want to highlight today. Yet the spiritual realm is weightier, the fasting is weightier, the, the praying, the, the prayer room is weightier, but let's still not neglect this war on two fronts that we're fighting because the devil's trying to deceive us here and we, we want to be um, have that wisdom to, to have that uh, applicability. So here's the lessons that we can draw from these patriarchs and their way of life. Is the unmissed... Um, Knowledge, the way what we can draw from through reading between the lines, is there any inapplicable? So that's, I guess, what I want to present today. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. Again, you've given me about a hundred alarm bells ringing off in my head about directions of what we can go. But first, portal call lives is like, of course, like the pragmatic element to the faith, whether it be the the agricultural storytelling, the uh, practical applications, the the physical discipline that's involved within this walk, self control being a fruit of the spirit, and what is that? What is self control without discipline? What is patience without discipline? Uh, which is an incredibly um, uh, physical physical matter uh, I, I really appreciate the foundation you're laying there Jackie I think you're starting to to uh, to you know just create a bit of a, a, a picture in terms of where we're going into one thing I think that, that that springs to mind is the cultural inheritance of like martial arts that we've got so uh, for some of the younger viewers who might not remember that there was a great East West, uh, meets West kind of in the 80s where you had the sort of pioneers of Bruce Lee and uh, a lot of martial arts, kung fu films were, were coming through into uh, into our um, uh, yeah TV movies. Obviously, a lot of us weren't in the faith at these times, but there was a massive influence in terms of the perspective of what martial arts was mm-hmm. from a cultural perspective. So there's that element, I think, that we need to bear in mind that when we talk about this topic, that the the, the it would be dismissive to conceive of martial arts as just this Eastern philosophy, discipline of fighting. There, there is much more to that, and I'm, I'm definitely happy in what i've seen to 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 have established that it's a much wider range in terms of what we deem martial arts to be Uh, and then like you say putting it into a biblical perspective of like it's the most violent book it's one of the most violent books books you'll (laughs) read um so like you say it'd be naive to, to suggest otherwise um now you said about context which i think is um paramount which we we would um uh 
suggest with with any biblical uh, subject so in the regards of, of context now I- again you can look at exodus 22 you know if, if somebody comes into your home at night you've got the right to to take a life if it's during the day etc so there's there's th- th- there is provision for potentially for physical things to take place and um i, I would be interested to to go into Okay, so it's a different time. It's a different, you know, Abraham had to do things that we might not necessarily need to do. But can you see a modern context in which these things might be uh, applicable? Not just in terms of discipline and self-control, which I'm sure we can we can touch on, but just in terms of engaging in, in situations that um, we wouldn't necessarily choose to go in. As an example, the, the one of my earliest thoughts with regards to this topic is literally like, how do I defend my family, my wife, my my children? Like, what are the rules? Can I, can I learn a self defense in order to protect? A- am I in danger of of, of doing things that are uh, antithetical to to the word? Like, so there are there for me personally, there are genuine uh, questions about what what is the context for today in in, in terms of how how we uh, navigate that. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, and it's it's huge, isn't it? Because I guess this is where we where the conversation usually comes to an end, mostly when we're talking about these things, is like, look, it can't really be applicable. Right. And um, for me, at least, uh, what, what I hope to break down as well is that I'm not really focused on um, the event in case these things happen or in case we're in war or in case a burglar comes through the, the, the house at night and these sort of very small percent chances which you know <laughs> it, there's, a, there's like a bit of a meme online of like someone practicing mma and it says um training for the guy training for the bar fight he's never gonna be in right. you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like and like this is the reality that these things are very like minor i guess in in the world so what i want to focus on is more the, the the training aspect of it okay. you know there's a there's a great there's a great quote um better to be a warrior uh, in a garden than a gardener in a war and this for me what i took from it was to be the, the warrior in the garden is to know your capabilities but i guess before we go off that track i, I, I will bring it I'll, I'll try my best to answer your question yeah 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 and this is it you see this is very new and being also should i say being rediscovered and we're, we're pushing boundaries here on, on what we can and can't do and we don't want to hyper, like I say, hyper spiritualize things. And I, I guess it all depends where you're up to in your walk. Now, if you're on an apostolic mission, and you've been sent away from your family to go on a, on a mission to um, preach the gospel message, and you're in the street and you're getting spat at, and, and and even slapped and harassed and water bottles thrown at you, should you retaliate with some kung fu magic? <laughs> no, of course <laughs> you shouldn't. You know, you're told to turn the other cheek. You know, and 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 lay your life down and and, and be the suffering servant. Of course you are, and and I would say in most ninety nine percent of scenarios you're meant to do that. Uh, now, of course, the context greatly changes if there's an intruder in the home. The Torah clearly specifies that. That was an excellent scripture. I, I, I've read it in the past many times, but I forgot about that one. So thank you, brother, for for bringing that to attention. Yeah, if there's an intruder in your home and you do have a family, y- y- your your duty then as as a man on this earth your duty switches then from no longer to being a suffering servant to being a protector in that mm. moment so of course it is all it is all context and i think the end goal is to become that apostolic um this, this disciple where you're putting yourself in scenarios where people are being aggressive towards you you have the ability to be aggressive back and particularly um, you, you're not you, you're withholding it and I think that's that, that there's the power in humility uh, we, we're reading scripture that Moses is the most hum- humble man on the earth now to reach that level of humility there must also be a level of power that he possesses for him to humiliate the other person right. so as we see um, Moses at that time had direct communication with God Whoever he said, he could wipe out, obviously God willing. These are all things God willing. But technically, he was the most powerful person on earth at that time. He's got the the Ark of the Covenant. He's going through the Promised Land, defeating these so-called superpowers of the world, Egypt, the Amalekites. But it's tempered with humility. And the question I, I ask the listener is that can we have the the 
Moses that we read about with the with the humility and who's holding such high regard and a great leader and and, and, and an epic story and a, a, a prophet of the faith. Can we have that same man if we remove the, the, the general from his walk? And I don't think we can. And um, this is an element here of what he's been given and trusted with to see to, uh, and to reveal the level of humility. Now, when we're talking uh, martial arts and the ability to inflict, I guess, humiliation on someone else, having that ability to disable, disarm someone, right. ultimately doing that, that shows a greater humility when you don't use them abilities. But to be in that position of showing humility, you first must be in a position of power right. <laughs> to to instill, in, in a sense, if yeah. that if that makes. And 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 of course, the suffering servant uh, Yeshua Hamashiach. What did he say? He, he, <laughs> He said to the, he turned around and said to the disciples, "Do you not know that I have twelve legions of angels at my dispense?" Mm-hmm. Yeshua was a military general. He had twelve thousand angels ready to deploy and wipe out the, the earth if, 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 if by so means he what he wished. But he didn't. He resorted to humility, and you can only reach that level of humility with having first having. Um, a, a elevation over someone or right. in a position over someone. So there's, I think, I think these themes are are, are interwoven in the Bible, of of um, you know the 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 martial, the, the ability to fight, but then also the ability to be um, humble in in these situations. Definitely, and just thinking anecdotally, I mean, there there are so many uh, examples of where people uh, would use that power or seek that power in order to to you know to gain vengeance, retribution. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you've got that archetypical bullied at school. Uh, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna get strong and learn how to fight, and then I'm gonna go back. And so there is that um, fleshly um, pitfall, as yeah. it were, to to go down that route of um, yeah, uh, actually wanting to to prevail and lord over somebody when and humiliate somebody because that's how you felt initially. Because um, I, I guess that's that's part of the difficulty when martyrdom has been. Uh, so prevalent within terms of uh, the faith and the history of the faith obviously like you said the w- what Yeshua preached and taught you know um, it, it's, it's a difficult one to marry up because it's like you know he told like when he cut his ear off and he's in the garden of Gethsemane he's just like what are you doing you know he doesn't he doesn't directly teach us to to, to go out and engage in these in these activities but yet um, like you say, we, we find ourselves in these quandaries where you, you might have to um, do certain things you wouldn't wouldn't anticipate. So, you know, appreciate that. Yeah, um, and look, you know, I'm no martial art expert, and this is just a topic we're trying to flex here and have fun with. Um, but you know, I have um, felt myself. I have made it in the past to to explore both of these sides um, with a fast and then with in, in intense um, level of training. And I've tried to. Um, operate in these realms to really have a f- to show a faith that works, you know, and um, test what it is to fast and uh, and to really delve into deliverance, but then also the discipline mindset. I completely understand the the concern of viewers listening to this about the spiritual realm. Jack, you're neglecting this, but like I'm like, no, there is a true element to this, and there's you, you, you know what state I was in there, whether I was thirty days fasted or or I was in the best shape of my life and feeling like a um, uh, you know, a Porsche wait, waiting to t- take off. Th- there's, th- this is one thing I took from it is that the test never ceases. It just transitions. It doesn't matter if you're 30 day fasted or if you're in the best shape of the life, the test is going to come into your life. No matter, no matter what stage you're trying to be at. Right. Now, what we've got to do as, as believers is recognize that that the test will transition and change and, and adapt to these scenarios. And I think this is, you know, I, I was meditating of, uh, you know, in the walk of here, people who want to buy a plot of land and head off and get away from the cities. But I'll tell you now, Yahovah will test you and bring a storm and m- make, <laughs> make your water start working. Or, you know, the, these tests are inescapable. Well, how I'm trying to approach this conversation is, is like, look, this, this, there's two extremes here. There's the there's the spiritual extreme of a thirty day fast, and then there's the extreme of working out and sort of both of them are suffering. Well, <laughs> you know? I, I, that, that, my first my first thought is if you were to like if this was a uh, a, a greengrocer's and you had to compare the fruit, like what 
was there a discernible difference in terms of the the benefits and the the pitfalls of either extreme? Because, like you say, you can you can advocate on either one of those sides and say, well, if you do the fast, da 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 da, you're going to get this amount. But if you're in a disciplined routine and your body's a temple, etc., like was there was it one and the same or? or was there a discernible difference? Yeah, th- thanks, bro, for asking that question. I, I, you know, of course, I'll always give the weight to the spiritual. The spiritual is always um, more significant. But what I'm trying to highlight here um, is that is that look. We're, we're quick to label vanity on someone who may work out or do a workout regime or self control. We're quick to warn our, our fellow brothers in Christianity: be careful, because you might come into vanity here. Be careful; there might be self idolization. Mate, that's a checkpoint six, seven, eight, mm. put eight down the road. First, you're dealing with the flesh. I said at the start, the two people you're fighting against is the spirit and the flesh. The flesh is so um, powerful. You know, Paul says, um, my, my flesh makes me do the things I don't want to do. <laughs> you know, it, and, and, and I think um, the, the, the discipline from the training and these things can, can definitely bring... Um, spiritual gain, just as I, I spoke of the start, where there was physical elements which affected the spiritual man. Right. The, the, with the training, with, with keeping your temple essentially in a healthy way, this this can have positive influence on the spiritual man, and it shouldn't be overlooked. Right. And, and do you think there's potential when you're going into that? What, what are the pitfalls of going into the extreme of... Um, taking care of yourself do you think because um i i'm personally fully advocate the relationship between uh physical discipline and spiritual discipline i think routine regularity perseverance uh doing things that you don't want to do all combine to 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 a lot of uh, spiritual fruit but w- what do you uh, aside from the vanity element do you think that there can be pitfalls with that yeah there's loads bro you know like i just said there you can't escape the, the test that just transitions it, ch- it changes, it adapts. Um, in, in, in when when you're working out, of course, there's vanity, there's ego, there's pride, and um, there's um, for elitism in a sense. You know that you're superior than others. There's loads of pitfalls that come with that, but there's also loads of pitfalls that you can fall into with with, with, with attempting fast. You know, yeah, because so, you, <laughs> you can get spiritually haughty, right? Yeah, yeah. Like oh, I'm, I'm doing, I'm doing this spiritual thing and i'm elevating yeah. and i'm 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 better than you and uh, yeah so yeah I, I think it's really interesting what you're bringing there bro yeah I, I, and i'm trying to basically i'm trying to say to the viewer look that i'm trying to alert you look i'm happy to do a podcast on deliverance in fact me and the gents recorded one unfortunately it didn't go online and um, one of the gents who was with us at the time he didn't want it online i'm happy to speak about deliverance i'm happy to speak about fasting i'm happy to speak about prayer i'm happy to speak about the spiritual realm but everyone's speaking about that no one's speaking about the war on the flesh and the war on the flesh you need to you need to face that enemy and you know this this may sound harsh but you know, be, be you know being having having a healthy weight on you is part of being a disciple. You know, God cares about our diet. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, there's specific Torah laws for what we eat. You know, the sins of of, of of gluttony in this avenue. So we have to marry these two together. And of course, not make it an idol. Flesh and blood doesn't inherit the kingdom of God. But to recognise that our physical state just the way we can do things which will harm our spiritual state we can also do positive things in our physical state which will also edify our spiritual man a transferable skill if you will yeah yeah definitely yeah and um i guess just moving on a little bit now because i've spoken a lot about martial arts and you could say okay well jack what 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 did these guys practice and the honest answer is we don't really know um in the bible it doesn't really say what martial art these guys uh, practice. There is um, conjecture that it was a martial art called a beer. Darren's smiling at me <laughs> <laughs> because there's this martial art online where they like get in the different poses of the Hebrew I, I alphabet. Had, I had no idea about <laughs> this, and then when I when I got onto it, I was like, "Oh, right, okay." Uh, like you say, stressing on on the conjecture element, and we don't really know, but um, it kind of made a lot of sense because essentially. From what I what I gather, every culture, every civilization, um, basically develops its own form of martial arts, mm-hmm. um, east, west, and everything in between. And so, the, like you say, with the biblical narrative, it's hard to then um, 
uh, yeah, uh, remove the the the, he, the the Israelites from that. So when when you first uh, mentioned it, and I had a look, I was like, oh, okay, right, this is this is because uh, a lot of uh, I, I don't know what the viewers think, but uh, or, or, or understand with martial arts, a lot of it is an imitation of um, animals, mm -hmm. you know, an expression of, of of animals within the moves, and when we uh, when we're so familiar with the emphasis on the Hebrew. Uh, language putting it in that context i was like oh right okay so there is a there is a link there yeah you know i've, I've looked at it online a beer a beer and um, I, I checked also shortly before to come here this hebrew word appears six times in the bible and it's often referred to um when god is described as a, as a, a mighty god uh, it used i think it first appears uh, with jacob in genesis personally for me um, a beer. I don't know. Uh, I don't. I, you know. I don't. I haven't done enough sort of history and background to know how legit that is. Um, and again, I guess. I guess what I'm trying to say here is, look, there's 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 martial arts that are based on spirituality, and then there's martial arts which are just simply for self defense. Right. And because they're all categorized in MMA or mixed martial arts, I think this is where the fear creeps in, where boxing has no spiritual application to it. It's just the ability of, um, you know, using your yeah. fist, essentially, you know, or um, wrestling, I guess it was probably a, a better example, is the ability of um, disarming someone to the ground, you know, right. where... You could maybe study some of these other Eastern um, martial arts where they'll have their religious practices intermingled. So this got me thinking and meditating and thinking, okay, well, how can this be applicable then? Because, you know, I don't... Every every sort of dojo or academy is going to be different from the next, just as like how we have churches. You know, one may be focused a little bit more on the spiritual side or one practice of MMA might be different. So it, it can get sketchy when we're trying to apply this MMA to our lives, so I guess I want to come from the angle of more okay involved in in um, in, in the disciplines of these is working out is is self control, you know of of maintaining the body. Now that that is one way of of looking at it. Now there's a, there's a gent that I come across online a couple of years ago, 2016. He's called uh, Jason Wilson. He's from Detroit, and he actually um, owns a. Um, mixed martial arts academy it's called the cave of Adullam, and it's brilliant what he does and now he focuses um he, he focuses these programs towards uh, children and it's all about self-defense now this guy funny enough he's actually um he's a hebrew he, be he's, he believes in yeshua he calls him by his name yeshua he observes the sabbath he's you know he's not not too far from me and you from what i can tell he has the same beliefs and he uses um the, the practice of martial arts as a, a courier you could say to teach biblical principles right. now if you can think about this for a the moment these eastern religions are using something physical as a courier to um implant their own religions or spirituality on now when you think about it if this martial art is being passed down from generation to generation, from Abraham to Isaac to Jacob, if this was a part of their training, which it does look like it could be that way because David knew how to train his men. Yeah, I don't think you can go and engage in, in, in these sorts of situations without having a clue about how to engage in combat. Yeah. You just get <laughs> rinsed out. Yeah, I mean, like, Abraham went and res rescued his nephew Lot. I mean, surely he had a background and this 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 was a part of their culture. So my, my sort of thought pattern is then is, okay, if we've got, we know that the enemy, he likes to um, use what is good and twist it slightly and, 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 and then have its corruption. For instance, the Maseroth, the constellations, we've been looking at that recently, mm -hmm. podcast in itself. One day, Jackie, one day <laughs> we're going to get into that one. Um, so could this be the case with MMA where we see these Eastern religions as, as are using the, the, the form of combat as a courier for their spirituality? Could then Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, these patriarchs been using martial arts to explain certain principles in the Bible in a practical sense? Now, this is all sounding a bit like crazy theory and people online are thinking, wow, you know, I never really pictured Abraham like this, mm -hmm. potentially. Um, and, and for me, this this was a lot. This was very theory based until I come across this academy and seeing it in action with young boys. I'll give you an example before we we play a video. Um, I was at um, Sakota a few years back, 
And it was to w- one of the last days during Sukkot, and we played a game of hide and seek with pretty much everyone on campus, youngest to oldest. We all played this ha- game of hide and seek or manhunt, we call it in the mm-hmm. UK. Doesn't sound quite as uh, <laughs> PC yeah, yeah. <laughs> when there's kids involved, but yeah, it was a game of hide and seek in the woods. And what it was just so beautiful. It was so childlike. We was running through the woods. We was we we was engaging in this activity of hiding behind trees, working in teams. There was a base. We would tag someone. You'd go back to the base. So th- then one of the kids would just be hiding underneath a log. He would get up and run over and release everyone. And it was such an epic uh, uh, activity. Now what I noticed was is after that activity, my engagement with the children uh, who took part was just on a completely other level. Up until that, uh, fr- from from when we first joined at Sukkot, I, I maybe I might have asked them a few trivial things. Right, yeah, yeah. Like, hey, look, don't put your, your coat next to the fire because it's going to burn. And he would move it, you know, and he would put it to another side. But what I noticed in these last final days after we played that game, they were so responsive. They were so respectful. They was, because you'd spoken to them on a language that they understand. Yeah, there was yeah. a relation. There was a, there was something formed. Now this could never really would have been formed through them sitting through one of my teachings or listening to Joe or blowing the shofars or even with the songs and the music. The kids are usually at the back playing with the toys, right. but we, we, we presented idea. We, we, we engage with them in a way which which they could receive and understand. And it was a relationship formed there. And I was like, wow, Mexico, we need to do this game of hide and seek at the start of the feasts. Mm-hmm. Now, if you think about this in the secular world, with if you're joining a new job, for yeah. instance, they'll do icebreakers. icebreaker, yeah. quite cheesy, but there is bonds works, that form yeah. here. It does work, particularly, I believe, in children, because they may not have the capacity to express um understanding of like deep self-control and these things but you can show them it and you can you can act in, this in out real time, yeah. in real time and also as an adult this is going to sound a bit mad but as an adult i'm just faster than a child <laughs> i'm stronger than a child and there's a there's a natural level of reverence there where i remember when i was a kid and maybe one of the adults were join and play football with us and I had a level of like wow he's legit now that guy I've seen him kick a ball about it right, there yeah. was a natural reverence that came that that, that was involved there so w- when we're looking at ap- applicability to this I'm, I'm, I'm putting these pieces together and then um, meditating on it and, and I come across this academy and what I believe Jason Wilson is doing here is phenomenal with young lads he's using martial arts a practical application to teach biblical principles to children um what in their language what what they can understand in a physical form and some of these um some, some of these ideas, what they're learning at such a young age, that may take 10, 15 years before they finally have a, a real life encounter to assess that themselves. Mm-hmm. But because there's a coach involved, there's a mentor involved, and, and um, the, the key here is a, is a simulated environment where, where they're put in to be put under a test to, to, to emulate re- you know, tests in the real world. The, the, the learning on you know, an exceptional growth level so um, the applicability to me, and I haven't got this all worked out, but I think it will be more for the next generation. Now, bear with me because there's, there's loads with this of what we could get into. Um, did you want to say anything before? Uh, no, before I was, I just, did, I was just deliberating to whether to watch the video first and then get into it. <laughs> I, or, or, I You're the head. host, man. It's, it's pop- let's let's yeah. watch the video because, yeah. like you said, there's a lot going on there. There's a lot. There's, going a, on there's a lot going on, and look, this this but is not all negative. <laughs> no, no I'm, it's not like I'm, I, I need to jump on this theory. Like, no, I, I think you're, you're touching on some very, um, uh, some very very key points. Uh, no, let's watch. Okay. Let's well, well, what I want to say as well is for the listeners, hold on with me here because we're going on a bit of a rabbit hole. <laughs> okay, just just, just bear with me. Right. Bear with me. Um, but yeah, it's uh, uh, just even in what you were just saying, there, there's some there's some serious. Uh, uh, serious bitch. Yeah. Okay, before you pre- press play, this went viral in 2016, this video. Now, curiously, the BBC actually reposted this video, but as you're going to see in a second, our brother says the name Yeshua, right. but they actually edited that part out. Oh, is it? Funny enough, on the BBC, just a little side note, you know, a little naughty BBC pesky, there. Pesky BBC. Um, k- k- had, to keep the, uh, the <laughs> had to keep the credit out to the glory to the most high. But yeah, let's, let's, let's have a little walk, because I, I think this is, this is beautiful. Zeus! Ah! Zeus! Ah! Zeus! Ah! Zeus! Ah! Zeus! Ah! Zeus! Ah! 
pulling, punch all the way through. When you feel the pain, go all the way through. That could be a barrier in life or anything. Punch hard. You gotta punch it hard enough. Punch through it. You feel pain? Shake that off. Let's go. That's what this is about. Good. Let's get to that. Why are you crying? That's what this is about, son. It's okay to cry. We cry at me. Why are you crying, though, son? Tell me, why are you crying? It's part of test for a reason. Why are you crying? Go ahead, son. Because what? Because it is for to store with my left hand. Okay, good. But you did it. You punched him today. You know in life there's going to be things harder for you to do than other things? Yes, sir. And you know those things that may appear to be hard to do, you're going to have to do as a man, regardless. And it's going to take tears. It's going to take the blood of Yeshua, Jesus, and your sweat to break through it. Do you understand? Yes, sir. So I don't mind you crying. I cry a lot, too. You know what I'm saying? All right? So I want you to just to... You're pulling your blow. I don't know if you're facing fear or you're feeling that you may not make it. And we all face that from time to time. And when we face, as soon as we hear resistance, we don't want to stop, right? Because it's hurting you for that pain. You're like, I'm not going through this no more, right? Exactly. We have to go off the field as men. It's going to be very painful. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Being a black man in this country, you're going to need mental fortitude. You're going to have to be strong here more so than here. You understand? You can do it. You just got to put your mind to it. And it's good to cry so you can work through that emotion. So when it arises again, you can push it to the side and do what you got to do. You understand? Yes, sir. All right, good. Let's see what you got. Breathe, dig. Hard. Tell me what hard you can. I was I was getting emotional watching that again. To be honest, um, yeah, it's um, I I think that's just beautiful, brother. Um, there's there's just so many elements there. There's this this mentorship, um, and something which isn't explained in the video. Um, I've I've done a bit of recent back seen a background on this, and the, the child actually had punched through this board many times before, but when he stepped up to do a test. With the environment, what he was in, with all the kids and the pressure and the parents watching, he was unable to do it because there was fear there. And, you know, Jason there being a, 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 almost like a father figure, a mentor, he kneels down on one knee, he comforts the, the young boy, and, oh, I'm getting goosebumps. Um, you, uh, you, you, yeah, fatherhood, basically, um, which is a tangent we could, we could definitely go down hard, but um, it's that premise of... Uh, uh, a father role model in a in a young man's life, a reference point of what a man looks like, uh, coaching, explaining, um, teaching, giving him lessons, and encouraging encouraging him to go through the, uh, the the pain barrier emotionally and physically. It's massive, and I think we can both attest this is an area in which we both had a, a deficit in, and uh, we're left to sort of pick up the pieces as, as we grow up. So. Our responsibility is then to look at these um, these areas and go. Well, where do we step up, and how do we fulfil the roles in which we've um, yeah we we've had negated? Now, with that being said, one of the when you were previously speaking there, I think you've what what we've done. We're going into an area that isn't that's inclusive of not just martial arts, but any competitive sport, um, athleticism which I, to, in my opinion, are all inherently amazing. To, to uh, Human endeavour in, in an athletic capacity is a, is a God-given, like, beautiful thing to behold. Um, com competition in itself can, can bring so much fruit. Um, you can learn so many um, biblical principles in an environment of um, competition, teamwork, and... Um, these are all inherently good. The challenge that we have, I think, not only in the context of martial arts, but within sports in general, is where does the gladiatorial 
competitive line start to seep into what is a, a, a an amazing principle. So if you said to me, is 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 Premier League football an environment in, in which I would want my child to be a part of? No way. Yeah. But would I advocate taking my son or, or my daughter to uh, uh, you know a local environment to engage with their community and, and, and other children to learn all of these uh, amazing, amazing facets of human and child development. Absolutely. So I'm, I'm willing to uh, navigate that principle within that area of, of martial arts as well, given uh, that example you've just given is actually uh, yeah, a great, great attest to uh, that. Thanks, brother. I'd, I'd like to... Um, touch on the other sports in relation to martial arts but uh, you know I guess this has taken a long time to explain because because there is a lot of unraveling that we need to do with this and um that example there it was just to me that 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 encompasses everything of of a mentor of a fatherhood um and this is what I truly believe the patriarchs was receiving from a young age I believe they was getting biblical principles for a practical element and we can talk about evangelism all we want, but until we actually are trying to preach the gospel, we don't learn. You know, we can speak about self-control and fear, and um, oh, we can conquer fear because we've got God on our side. But until we're put in a simulated environment like that, now this is what I want to um, highlight on here because when I first, I guess, brought this idea to the table, martial arts and the Bible, everyone's thinking of. Oh, the war, the spectacle, the entertainment. I'm not even entertaining that idea. I'm thinking about the training and, right. and, and, and what you can draw from that. We can get into that, sure, um, no problem. But for me, where the fruit lies is, yeah, we're not at war, but Abraham wasn't at war for the longest time either. You know, there's, there's elements of training that we can still learn from here, like like these guys. And um, just, a, just a few things with, with, with that academy there. As, as, as well it, you know again i can't stress that the the courier of being able to explain these biblical um uh, examples but through something physical and when we're talking second generation now because you know i i was growing up in a home that wasn't um, believers christians whatever term you want to use now my life experiences unfortunately I went through maybe events like this, but in real time and learned my way to, you know, attempt to be, you know, to be shrewd and to be street smart and to, to, to be able to speak to people, to engage in conversation, to know when to pull away, to know when to fight, to run. These elements I've all had to experience, unfortunately, with trauma attached to it. Right, okay. Because um, there hasn't been necessarily a platform. Now, of course, God will use all scenarios, you know, God will use... Um, Moses coming through the ranks of the Egyptians, Joseph. But if we're talking, if we've got the optional choice of how we can push and create the best fruitful opportunity for the next generation, just as maybe Abraham did and Isaac did, then you want to be able to simulate environments and tests, just in a sense the way our father does for us, where they can um, overcome these fears without the trauma traumatic um, elements attached right. to it. And not only does that breed a healthier man this also um advances a man so much quicker than than what it could just left off to their own devices because i guess when i was speaking about this subject as well i was approached by a, um a, a couple of women with caution and i, I really uh, not just wearing a few guys as well and i understood the position because this ultimately this trait that that we're, we're viewing here of competitiveness maybe pride getting in the way um these 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 are more pr uh, prominent in men in young boys, right. and when we're looking at this warrior attribute of our father, when we're looking at this this characteristic, it is ultimately a, a masculine trait. We see in the Bible, age twenty and older, the men would go off to the war. It wasn't the women who went off to war. There's something um, paternal inside of us that um, allows us to act in role in that way of a protector just as how a woman will have mater maternal characteristics right. and as much as I can read and experience a, 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 a love between a woman and, and her child I can never feel that ultimately 
And she takes that quality, I believe, from the Ruach HaKadosh. Yeah, it's a he, it referred to as a he and a person, but the, the Ruach in Hebrew is also a feminine now. Right. I, I, I believe that that's a divine character there, which they have intrinsically woven into them, which I can never really get my head around, and that can either be directed for good or for evil. Now, same with men. Men have this warrior spirit, so to speak, what we see um our father and Yeshua coming back in this um, ability to defend and to fight and to go to war for what is right and to disregard what is evil and contest what is good. This is naturally more so built into men. Of course, we're speaking in general terms. Yeah. These can be exceptions. Now, my fear is when we're talking about second generation, this competitiveness, this uh, pride... These can be funneled through in society. They, they, they will naturally rise to the surface. Well, my, my target is, is, is how are we going to concentrate it into these different lanes, you know, if we have this option. So, for instance, for me, I was a super competitive guy growing up. <laughs> 12 years old, I was uh, captain of the chess team. I was also captain of the football team. I wanted to win everything. I, would, I think my uncle beat me once at FIFA. And um, I trade. I like. I played FIFA like every night until I could beat him. Super hyper comp- competitive, but I didn't have a mentorship. And I played football. I eventually, ended up in video games. Now that competitiveness that was inside of me that is naturally more of a masculine trait. If you look at sports as a whole, if you look at just how men and women operate in their teenage years, men are more drawn to sports just in general. Mm-hmm. If you look at it across the board, so. When, when, when I'm thinking of a, a, a applicability here of, okay, you know, we're looking at these patriarchs. Wow, they're so incredible. Wow, you know, wh- what do we have missing what they had? They, I believe they had these means of funneling and um, competitiveness and um, areas where their um, pride would be knocked and tested in a simulated environment. And I believe that is the difference between martial arts and potentially the other sports is that when we're practicing martial arts, it is a very physical, um, demanding, and uh, um, personal um, sport, if you want to call it that. You're in each other's face. And um, for, en- for anyone who I speak to play martial arts, the, 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 the learning curve is huge. That You get submitted ver- really quickly. You get put in compromised positions. It's ultimately an ego crusher. Right, yeah. You know, and, and and we can all say, okay, yeah, I'm a humble guy, but until we're put in that test scenario, until we've demonstrated here, like this young boy, he could he could break that that, that object in, in another environment, but when it was put in a simulated environment and he broke that it, it, it took him a few tries, but wow, hallelujah, that was a victory. That That is a life-changing lesson in that young boy's life, which was done in a safe mentorship environment, which is it's priceless. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's incredible, and I think we're actually getting into a bit of the nuts and bolts uh, with regards to this. Um, when you were speaking about um, the, the power and the holding back and the, uh, the masculine traits in that, um, it yeah. just made me think of what you said at the top of the show about how the father could just pull the plug mm-hmm. at any point and uh, he doesn't through his mercy. Yeah. So I think it's, it's, a, it, it's hi- it highlights the mercy um, and the, the potential of us being merciful to, to others as he is to us. Um, now just, uh, I, cause I think it's good to just to draw the lines sure. and actually as we, uh, cause I'm really, I'm, I'm really enjoying how you, you, you walk in this one through. Um, we're we're speaking there about the, the the humility that's necessary. We're speaking about the the ego and the crushing of another, the humiliation. Now, I think there may be many believers out there who would advocate and completely agree about all of these tropes of, mm-hmm. of training, discipline, uh, mentorship, but their aversion to the principle, spiritual um, relation to uh, uh, to religious uh, connotations aside is the uh, causing harm to another individual. Sure. So I think that might be a good area to, to kind of visit because 
can you engage in a competitive sport without the elements of ego and humiliation and and and, and hubris in general being the uh, the heart of the match? I know you said it's the intention. Mm-hmm. Now, can can I engage in um, you know a punch bag? Can I can I work the mirror when I'm doing? Can I do this <laughs> can solo? You, can you do a little shadow <laughs> box there? Yeah. Can I do a little <laughs> blue steel? No, but like, can I can sure. I do this as a solo sure. endeavor? Sure. With, whilst maintaining my uh, biblical compliance, but is there going to be a threshold of, of, let's just say, sinful mm-hmm. um, behaviour by going into a, an engagement of combat? Yeah. Okay. Let's let's. I guess let's unpack this because I, I there's so much, and um, I, I'm I'm not going to let it escape now because this this is a such a huge part of it. Is like okay, where does the line be drawn on this? Um, I guess. Again, just to, to to sort of reiterate for the viewer, and, and sorry, sorry to stop you because we can we we yeah. we've touched on the um, religious mm-hmm. um, encroachment. So yeah. there are disciplines that do not have a religious association sure. due to the physical activity, but there are undoubtedly those that do. So you have jujitsu, which is basically body movements and wrestles and, ho- and, and holds, nothing to do you, with spirituality. Yeah, nothing, but then you've got. Ninjitsu, yep. which is all about being at one with nature, mm-hmm, links to mm-hmm, Taoism. Mm-hmm. You've got um, early forms of Greek wrestling, which is is which is woo woo. Like you've got woo woo in there. <laughs> there's but a we, lot of woo. There's a, so much woo, but we can ascertain that. Yeah. So, like we say, sorry to stop you, but how are we then getting to this this combative element without uh, yeah compromise? No, Darren, I love it. You know, it's honest, and these are the questions I'm sure the viewers are going to ask. Um, I guess before we get into it again, um. And I'm not saying you've got yeah, the answers yeah, either. Yeah, yeah. No, no, saying. no. Yeah. I, neither am I. Look, this, this is this is this is in a in a sense um, rediscovered turf. It, of course, here this this academy has been going for twenty years. Some great success, success stories. Um, but wh- how 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 do we get into this then? Well, for me, what what I wanted to focus on today is that is the training element. People can practice martial arts their entire life and not enter into the ring. Right. Now, let's just say hypothetically. People want to, you know, we, we look at organizations like the UFC. We look at organizations um, where it's some people could consider it as legalized violence. That's right. what they could say for people's entertainment. Now, it, it, it becomes a very, um, I, I would say, blurred line. For me, at least, I think how we've got to look at it is it is down to the individual. Now, let me get, give you an example on this now. A film called The Passion of Christ. Um, for me, it was an incredible film. Um, really moved me. It really saved me in, in a time in my walk. Of course, directed by Mel Gibson. Some people have their own opinions on this. And even with the film, I, I really took something from it. I know there's countless Christians who have, or, or people who have come into the faith through watching The Passion of Christ. On the other hand, uh, Emma, I tried to show it to her and she had to turn it off. Right. It was just full out violence for her. I speak to my brother Mark in in um in Mexico and as far as I'm aware, forgive me brother, but y- you didn't also like the violence with it. It was a bit of a it's hardcore, isn't it? It's it's ve- it's very violent. Now two people have sort of received differently from um this film, you know, one is, views it as violence and it shouldn't be displayed. Where the other person I'm like, wow, well you know, in a sense, it, it's revealing like the atrocities of the Messiah that what he went through. You know, and and, and so then, therefore, I thought you wouldn't show it to your six-year-old lad. You know what I mean? But it's I, I, I drew I drew from it. I think again, this this is this is the same with all entertainments across the board. Okay, you know, yeah, of course. Um, MMA can definitely seem violent as a form of entertainment. People would, would can. can I have no problem if if people want to brandish it as um, violence and that it's in a, inappropriate. I have no problem with that. The exact same way, I have no problem with Emma um, saying, "Look, I can't, I can't watch the Chosen." For me, personally, where it lies is I I, I view it uh, for competition. Now, this is this is where we've we've got to really look at, at what's going on here because um, something like mixed martial arts on the TV, is it common or is it holy? It's common. I mean, yeah. It's yeah. Oh, oh, it, it could be a lot worse than that in some people's eyes, but what I'm saying is it's it's not holy, is it? It's not set apart. It, it's, yeah. it's, not, it's not set apart. If it's not set apart, it's common. Now, if we look at 
all of sports, okay? If we look at the Premier League, you know, advertising of essentially gambling, um, the, the money that's involved, for me, it's evident that refs are being bribed. There's, you've got tribalism within football of different cities fighting against each other. Um, the segregation, I know my, literally I've got family members who will not go to Manchester City based off of football. Mm-hmm. If you look at the NFL, you know, highest... Um, statistically, that the highest sport in the world for concussions, which then can lead to um, men abusing their, 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 their partner uh, uh, in, in domestic violence. All of it for me, none of it is kingdom work. There's, there, there's no competition or event or... All of it is, is, is ultimately of the world, every single sport, and even down to TV shows, if you want to say MMA is violent, have you ever watched someone die in a, in a, in a TV show? Or, or Then that, in a sense, that is um, promoting violence, and it's, you know, there's a level to it there, that is a level of permission, a permissible le- level. So I think where you make the distinction between this is recognising Okay, well, if these things are of the world, then what is holy? Okay, this is how then we can separate it. For me, I wouldn't watch football, MMA, any of these worldly things on the Sabbath because this, for me, is a holy time. It's a set-apart time. Now, entertainment outside of that, of course, there is a line, but each man will have his own measure and each man will be able to define if it's sin or not in, in the word, as the scripture says in Proverbs 16.2. Each way, each man and his own way is pure in his own eyes, but the Lord examines the spirit, the Lord examines the intent. So, me, me, you know, I've discussed this, Daz, in my own mind time and time again, and, and, and if you want to go there, like this technology that we're using right now is, is, is probably fallen angel technology, you know? And Bro, this, <laughs> this thing is called the Black Magic Design Box. So there, like, there you uh, go. The, yeah, sw- yeah, yeah, the yeah. switcher board we use is the ATEM Mini Pro Black Magic Design. I mean, what, what, it, what ends up happening is you... you <laughs> you'd end up in a, in, a, in a room with white walls holding your breath because you can't breathe the air because it's got chemtrail particles in it. I, I think <laughs> if, I, if I'm going to interject, and, sure. uh, uh, it, the, I think the suggestion is being yeah. whether the activity itself is inherently mm. sinful, yeah. irrespective of the, of the day of the week that we watch on, whether it's set apart or not. Because sure. like you say, not all things, all things that some things are permissible, but not prop. Profitable, profitable yeah. Um, and I, I do believe there's a degree of, of, of liberty and maturity when it comes to um, what we uh, can use as the form of entertainment, uh, what we uh, use for leisure, um, and how we discern, uh, A, how much time we put towards it, and B, whether it's fruitful, or C, if it's actually just a sin. So I think, I think what's, again, what sets martial arts... Uh, 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 separate, separate from the rest, and uh, you know, it's not that I'm uh-huh. uh, saying you don't realize this. Is 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 the en- is the physical engagement? If if you know the corruption and the greed and the money and the power and the sex and the lust is associated with every discipline, you could probably go to flipping indoor bowls and see some shenanigans course, going on. Yeah. But the point I being, is there's because there's the difference of engagement of physical harm. Mm-hmm. I think that's that's where. Um, from a biblical standpoint, irrespective of, of uh, personal preferences and opinions, it's like, can you justify causing harm to another in any context? Sure. And again, you know, you've got to look at this. So what you've just said there, can you justify causing harm? Well, NFL, you know, there's going to be harm involved. I mean, Sukkot, that last Sukkot we've just got, someone was, get, someone was getting wheeled in a, in a wheelbarrow and come <laughs> off and twisted the leg. There's always going to be harm, but I see what you're saying. There's two people. Intention. There's two. There's two people trying to cause harm to each other, and this is this is what it comes down to. One person sees this as competition, just as maybe um, the warriors of old would have had a had a spa to, to, before they went into battle. They would have practiced their skills. There's going to be a few cuts. There's going to be a few black eyes. Let's just say, and then. Um, Versus, you know, maybe the women might not have been been able to watch that, or maybe some of the men might not have wanted to be around that environment. But maybe the instructors, because they're around that, they may have viewed that and seen it as fine. Just as I can watch the Passion of Christ, for instance, and not be 
I'm not as squeamish, you know? Yeah, okay. So, yeah. so what, what I'm trying to get at is, is one person will see it as competition and I think the other person will blatantly see it as sin. You know, th- this, th- this is a measurement which, which everyone is going to have to weigh that up uh, themselves. For me, I see it as two men. They both uh, legally sign a contract to, um, to, to test their skills out. Now, of course... Um, if we slap the UFC on there, if we slap the ring girls on there, if we slap all these other things on there, then w- w- we're going down a rabbit hole. Yeah, this this is this isn't godly. But if we're talking, you know, uh, oh, oh, right. So yeah. here's here's the synopsis. On, right, it's it's me and you, and yeah. I say, Jackie. Right, let's put on the gloves. Let's yeah. go out. Just me and you, yeah. and just have a have a have a spa, have yeah. a sesh. Nobody else around. Yeah. And then you compare that to, uh, like you say. Um, a, a spiritual cesspit of drugs, corruption, greed, and violence, sure. and blood. Like there's there's clearly a difference there. Like mm-hmm. I I grew up watching wrestling. Uh, I loved the A team. I love I loved action heroes. I love yeah. people getting in there and kicking butt and and saving the the woman and and I loved all of that. And I, I do believe that there's a place for that um, growth and development of being a protector and a provider as, as a masculine trait. However, um, yeah. At, we're in such a corrupted state is that is it even possible for us to engage in that level of um uh i, I guess uh, testing and um like you said the the emphasis being on a uh, facilitating a, a synthesis of, of a testing environment so that you can grow and develop I, I i would question whether it's possible to to do so there may well be uh places out there um, that that can whether that you know that, that academy for example but one challenge aside from all of the um all of the stuff we discussed whether it's football rugby boxing mma the challenge for anyone is going to be able to find an environment a secular environment that isn't at a degradation to the spiritual and physical uh, nourishment of that individual. So I'm talking like locker room talk. I'm talking um, music that's being played. Just the the gen. And I've been in changing rooms I've, I, for long for the longest time. I've been in around groups of men who are in the world, and it's it's not for the faint hearted. Um, but at the same time, you know, I gleaned a, a lot of good stuff. So. What I, I guess I'm trying to say, is it possible for us as believers, if I said to you tomorrow, jo, uh, Jackie, I'm re- I, I wouldn't mind like trying to learn some moves. I wouldn't mind. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Because sure. I want to sure. protect and all the rest of it. Like, is it possible to do that? I don't know if it is, Darren. Uh, honestly, um, I think what we're seeing here with this academy, there's, there's a, a clear intent behind it to deliver it certain messages and packages to people at a certain stage in right. life. <laughs> to develop martial arts and, and for me to say, in, okay, let's put some gloves on and let's go and have a spa in the background, there's, there's tons of factors with that. You know, there's no, there's no referee involved, there's no mentorship. We're just starting out. Why are we going to bang each other out? You know, you don't, you don't start, I guess, playing football by, you know, going to the extreme level of... of Playing in the Premier League, I think there's, there's there's levels to this, um, and I guess this is this is what I don't want to focus on really is I think with this conversation everyone focuses on okay what happens if it does get to this level, but I, what I'm saying is is that it's the warrior in the garden sketch. I'm not trying to get to that level. I'm not trying to invoke war. I'm not trying to invoke violence. I'm trying to um, see the perspective of martial art and, and the positives that we can draw from this. Um, you know, it's 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 a very it's a very complex situation. But then when we look at um, transferable skills, right. if I, if I was to say, okay, football, let's let's look at that as a transferable skill to our real life scenario. There's no, there's okay. Maybe you've got the the, the coach there and the teamwork and maybe the camaraderie that we're seeing, but where for where cran- transferable skills, it, it's not going to be as high. Hockey, tennis, these things are not going to have that ability to translate into our, our life as much. Would you ever see King David practicing with a hockey stick or with a tennis court, tennis tennis racket? So I think for me, the emphasis is, 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 is on the training. Everyone's going to have their own opinion on UFC, 
mixed martial arts, these things. Um, I know Tommy sees it as legalised violence, and I'm okay with that. I don't get offended with that. Mm -hmm. That's up to him. He doesn't have to watch that. Just as the same way, um, Emma wouldn't have um, the passion of Christ on because she sees that as violent. That, I've got no issues with that. For me, is I want to draw the, the, the transferable skills from MMA and see if that is applicable. And I think this leads quite nice into our next part so maybe we could play these next two videos be before we do that i just yeah. want to say for the uh, for the interest of transparency is that i don't want this to, to uh, if this seems like this is a, a a flexing of disagreement or coming from two two perspectives we're, we're obviously both going to have our own ideas and um experiences and, and and thoughts on on this subject but my main heart for this is to try to uh, investigate and explore this spectrum and to navigate the different uh, points of view because I'm, I'm aware that this is a very nuanced and complex yep. issue. We don't have all the answers. However, we, we, we have tried to, to navigate the, the many different areas in which uh, and, 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 and uh, contentions that this could bring. So when I'm suggesting these things, I'm not necessarily suggesting my own personal uh, belief or thought on it. It's like, I know that certain people are going to think a certain way about what Jackie says. I know what I know that people are going to uh, think a certain way about what I say. Yeah. So I think we're duty bound. Now, we, we, we spoke uh, previously uh, before we were, we were shooting this where we had a situation in a, in, a, in a Bible study where it became apparent that there was five different points of view, that there wasn't a, a unified agreement on a subject. And I, I had the thought that quite often uh, on this walk, I am, I am witnessing uh, not necessarily people's opinions, but I'm seeing the sum total of an individual's perspective because they've studied X amount of the Bible, they've watched and listened to X amount of teachings, they've had uh, whatever percentage of life experience, and they are the sum total of that, and that is the expression. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I find it hard to be offended if somebody is disagreeing with me, uh, if somebody is saying something that is controversial. Now, with that being said, there are certain foundational principles within the faith Amen. that are non-negotiable. We are fully aware of that. But when we are in this degree of non-salvation issues, but are contentious, we are acutely aware of this. So I just wanted to put that out there when we're exploring this, this subject that we have given this a great degree of thought we don't have all the answers and we encourage those that maybe are more well studied in this area to, to, to volunteer information forth. We are uh, uh, hopeful and expectant that this could instigate more of a conversation, whether it be with us, whether it be in the fellowship, whether it be in your own homes, um, just to have that um, conversation. So we know we know where we are. Yeah, brilliant, brother. And, you know, one of the Torah portions that delivered straight out uh, the first year was a uh, Torah portion better sheet. And I clearly labelled out um, there's potentially three categories that people can fall into. Salvation issue, do we believe in Yeshua or not? Yeah, we do. Okay, great. Okay, what can we discuss next then? Next then, is this a sin to or is it a sin not to? Mm. Okay, that's pretty big because we want to be walking in righteousness here. Okay, if we've settled that then, then it comes into like a bit of a discussional theory. Um, maybe, um, as I mentioned on the teaching, is the serpent in the garden an angel, an angelic being? Okay, this is a bit discussional. Is it a sin if you believe it? No. Is it is a, um, a, a, a sin if you don't believe it? No, it isn't. Can it edify your walk? Yeah. So I guess what we're trying to sort of bounce between is like this discussional space crossing over into is this sin to do it? Mm. Now, I think, I think it can be yes and no. Again, I think it's with intent. I think... All people who practice martial arts don't have to jump in a ring and go and have a fight. You know, I'm, I'm trying to focus here on the elements that we can draw from it, what our forefathers did. Um, I just want to play also the other side to show that I'm not so uh, rigid on it because there's a scripture here which I know probably people are, was itching to maybe put <laughs> in the comments and I'm going to beat you to it. <laughs> um, so it's First Corinthians 9, 24. And it says, Do you not know that in a race all the runners run? but only one receives the prize. Run in such a way as to take the prize. Everyone who competes in the games trains with strict discipline. They do it for a crown that is perishable, but we do it for a crown that is imperishable. Therefore, I do not run aimlessly. I do not fight like I am beating the air. 
No, I discipline my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified. For me, this is the end goal. This is, again, we're bringing this back now to an apostolic mission, being a sent one where, like Yeshua, like Moses, had the capacity to... um, Demonstrate power, but always remained humble in a humble state. Paul, I don't know if he was if he was kung fu up or not, but he's here. He's clearly here training his body in a different type of discipline here. Which again, I want to say that <laughs> I hope I've shown stated enough that this is the weightier matter. However, what one thing I will say here is Paul was in a state here of an apostolic mission. He wasn't with a family that he had to protect, and also um, at this stage in time. Um, he, he'd been schooled, he'd, he'd left his years of youth and he'd been under Torah instructors and teachers and, and he's at a level where he can understand these deep mysteries of the word. Now, when we come back to this cave of Adullam now, again, I want to focus on the courier of how martial arts here is being used as a courier to teach these young men with principles that in a practical application, what may not be able to be understood at this elite level. Of course, all the training, everything we do in our life is led up to us to be, to ultimately play a suffering servant, to be a disciple of the, the living high, most living high God. However, I think there are certain scenarios in our training that we can do. We're just going to play this one for, for, for a second and then I've got another one to show you all. So when you're ready. What's the memory verse? said earlier about uh like sparring in the woods like i've had more of that (laughs) (laughs) and um if we if we switch over so this is just basically um examples of these young boys um i'm i'm i guess you could say the fruit of what's taking place in the academy yo shalom and congrats to brader for ending the school year with a 3.8 clap so again using a, a sport, so to speak, as yeah. as a courier for biblical principles and and, and to teach um, manhood, you know, and as 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 men, um, we we see Moses and and, and Yeshua, and he had this uh, ability to be uh, courageous but compassionate, you know, strong but sensitive. They had, and when what you know, in in the, when we're looking at sort of. The questions what the world is being asked today and 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 we've we've seen um documentaries of what is a woman or we've seen um toxic masculinity and i think somewhere in all of this is 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 biblical masculinity and what what does that look like and i think i guess this is an angle that too i think could definitely be beneficial for the men in the body. Now, I'm not saying all the grown men should go and join an academy. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying what what we're what I'm bringing today, there's elements of self-control, discipline that we can apply. I think what the what, what this academy is doing is, is is brilliant for kids, and I think it is more applicable to kids than adults in a lot of ways mm-hmm. because we can then understand um, certain aspects and it, it uh, of, of the faith because we're more developed. Now, um, I've just got a little statistic here to to to, to bring down because you know. A lot of viewers may be saying, "Well, look, Jack, you know, you're actually teaching the kids violence here. Um, you know, as we as we've discussed in the past, the uh, the father hates those who um, love ra- violence, but we've also seen that duality of the father and 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 that how he can go to war and it's still not deemed, so to speak, as violence in a wrong intent. So, how does this work? How 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 as we're seeing here um, on on the website, they've got statistics of their school grades increasing." 
um, children evidently not being bullied anymore, which are traumatic parts of a childhood. Um, you know, uh, pre preventative measures. Um, we're also seeing um, camaraderie being formed. Another um, beautiful part of, of, of uh, masculinity is um, men have the ability to, um, <laughs> you know, th have deep relationships and camaraderie in teams. We think of throughout the Bible, we had like David and Jonathan, Joshua and Aaron, these beautiful bonds that are formed through doing f physical activity together. So th th there's many positives, and I, I guess that's why I don't want to be so dogmatic and, 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 and stuck at this, like, well, you know, you're just going to go and like beat someone up then, oh yeah, I'm like, no, like this is a part, I believe, um, could be implemented as like a, as a part of manhood. And I've just got a statistic here study of martial arts. Um, it says, in one study from 2009, researchers compared aggression levels between 15 to 18-year-old hockey players, a non-sport playing control group, and a taekwondo students. This study found that the martial arts students were lower in both overall hostility and verbal aggression, as compared to not just the hockey players, but even the same, uh, even the non-sport uh, playing group of the same age. So the Notice that it, it, it sounds it sounds counterintuitive. Teach children how to essentially disarm someone. Would that equal in more violence? You probably would think so, but it's actually the opposite in what what we find. A wealth of studies have confirmed the same results again and again. Practicing martial arts reduces overall aggression in both younger students and adults. Pair this outcome with the many other documented positive outcomes from better emotional control and increased ability to focus. And it's easy to see why so many schools and parents choose martial arts to help enrich children's lives. I, th I think there's, th there's something quite, quite brilliant within this. And we talk about manhood and in the Bible... Um, we, we see that, that men would go off to war at the age of 20, and in Judaism, they would be affirmed, a, a man at 13 years old, a bar mitzvah. And I think this is something that we're actually missing in today, today, today's society. You know, if we look around at society, you know, wh when, do, when does a boy actually become a man? When is there a test of him becoming a man? You know, these, these and what we end up find happening is, is that men go through life and they become a man child you yeah. know they get wrapped up in video games that where's the mentorship um what 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 what's there and again why do i use martial arts um because i believe it has the most transferable um abilities or or, or pra practic practical nature to real life scenarios and this here i think this one study is is brilliant um one of the um reels that that jason wilson done he, he was explaining how a student was getting bullied in school he come to the academy he, he learned martial arts and um the bully was not stop bullying him because he defended himself but what the student was proud of is that um when he uh, performed the self-defense and he, he um disarmed the the, 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 young, the other young lads and put him on the floor he was proud of that the fact he, he had control of the young lad's shirt and he, he, he had it in a way so the young lad didn't whack the back of his head off the pavement, you know? And and this this to me shows level of like self self aware and it's teaching the, the lambs of how to negotiate the devouring lions at such a young age. If I think of all the, the fights that I got into as a kid growing up, um, you know, sometimes um, being the victim and other times being the bully. You know, I remember an, an instance when I was a when I was a child. Th there was um, this other lad, and he was insulting my young brother. He's three years younger than me, and, I, and there was just this moment where I snapped, and I just I just basically beat this kid to a pulp. And you know, I, it was a week or so later I seen the kid, and he was covered in black eyes, and I was deeply ashamed. I'm deeply ashamed of it to this day. I really am because that was probably a real traumatic. Um, uh, instance in, in that person's life. Yeah, of course, he was being a bully to, to, to my... To do, but I, I had no understanding of, of my capability as a young man. I, I You know, I, I was just in, in that moment filled with rage and executed judgments where these guys are uh, training in these high 
um, stress scenarios and knowing their capabilities. You know, young men don't know their capabilities and, and, and their, their, their strength and power. You know, if you think of crimes that are committed um, uh, are mostly by men, if you think of um, very sensitive subjects, but if you think of the school shootings, mostly by men, if you think of rape, these are the really harsh subjects, it's by men, and because men aren't being shown their capability and aren't being tested through through manhood and having that mentorship, and I think these are the aspects that I want to speak about, and these are the aspects that, that we can really, um, where this can be really uh, ben beneficial. If we think of um, just an example within that, again, sensitive subject, school shootings, we often find there that these these men who are performing this, they, they, they've been humiliated in some way through bullying, whether it's through the teacher or through students. And because they've never been trained on how to handle their emotions in a, in a, in a humble environment where you're getting defeated every day, men don't know how to, to tame these emotions and it just brings destruction and chaos. There is no... Um, guidance for that, so to speak, and I think it is having great um, consequences on, on on society in that way. So, yeah, th there's there's many different perspectives, and I'm not saying I've got it all worked out, and I'm not saying I'm a kung fu master either, <laughs> or I'm trying to get the next generation as ninja warriors. <laughs> I'm not saying this. I'm just saying, look, the patriarchs they had something here what we was missing. Now, if I if I had a young lad and I was local to Detroit, I would, uh, and this guy's gym. I'd love my guy to go through that. As a parent, every kid wants their child to go through some form of physical activity. Anyway, it's healthy, you know, whatever that be, football, hockey, whatever it is. But if we're thinking of um, to optimize this and to bear the most fruit, then then this is the angle I'm coming from. You know, it's like okay, let let's look at this and 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 how how can we bear the most fruit through these means? That's um. Yeah, that's really well put. And, um, you know, as you were talking about that, then it just evoked that um, element of how men can be the most dangerous threat to society if if um, if things go awry. And um, quite often it, 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 it comes again, it comes down to fatherhood and, and uh, the uh, neglect or, or abandonment in that in that department. And it's quite interesting where again, this is probably a whole different podcast in itself, but the. Uh, Abandonment and rejection goes hand in hand with a competitive spirit. Mm, wow. It's a deep one, but it's one whereby uh, an individual is, is seeking validation, um, whether it be through prideful behavior, whether it be through one-upmanship, um, whether it be through validation in group environments, but more often than not, it's it's abandonment, um, wow. particularly from a, from a father figure. So I just think that's an interesting... Um, interesting area because uh, lo and behold like most de uh, deficiencies in in our society in our in our culture it's 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 through lack of uh, a strong uh, strong parents but in particular uh, uh, fathers so yeah yeah it's, it's it's a deep one brother and and look you know again you can get mentorship in all forms of life I'm trying to think here, okay, what is the most optional? If we had unlimited resources, what would be the most optional route to to, to, f to bring up your children, essentially? And I don't know if this is it. You know, I think I've, I've spoke a lot of theory tonight, but this is an academy that is working. It's catering to people who don't have dads, and that mentor stands in teaching biblical principles. And it makes you think of, like, Abraham and his 318 servants. How many of them was orphans? How many of them was under that banner of Abraham who was loyal? And, and 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 was brought grafted in essentially as as that part and it's 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 very deep and just touching I heard a quote and um, that a harmless man doesn't particularly make a good man right. you know it's a, a capable man who um, has self control is 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 what is a what what a good man is someone who can perform but no okay look I don't need to you know I know my limits in these scenarios and. If 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 our approach is, is to shelter children and to, to to make them harmless, I think sometimes that can do far much worse than exposing them to this. Um, give you an example. 
growing up, uh, we was quite naughty kids. Um, just you know, just kids being I can imagine just, that, just, yeah. just just kids being kids, really. You know what I mean? Um, and but there was th- one of the mums, bless her, she wouldn't let a kid play with us. And we was like twelve years old, and we just used to go around just doing. I'm not even gonna go there. I'm not even gonna. Yeah, but just just being kids, really. And um, it turns out, you know, you know, it, it's quite heavy, really. But this this guy ended up being worse than all of us, you know, and he mm. lived that sheltered life and, right, okay. and, and was reserved. And I, I can't help but make that connection, you know, between like if you if you over shelter a child, that that, that can this spiral even further. And again, it, it, it does ring true with these statistics. If they're exposed to a level of knowing their capability in their flesh, can that then translate in, in into um, making better decisions later on in life, bro. You, you, again, it's just like you stumbled into a whole another area of like podcast, <laughs> like black hole, because it is that uh, unenviable question of like, okay, so with regards to children, how much exposure? At what point, you know, do we go down the uh, like you say the restrictive yeah. Catholic girl, sure, you know, sketch, yeah because they haven't seen anything and all, all of a sudden... But then you go on the other end of the spectrum and you've got French children smoking and having sex at, like, 12 because they believe it's a way of which you can control. And, oh, well, the statistics stay in, sure. in, in Holland. Sure. If we give them marijuana and da-da-da... It, like, it's that. So yeah. <laughs> where we find ourselves in the midst of that is is a really... Uh, and this this is new, isn't it? And, and I guess um, when I say new... I mean, we're looking at here at the Almond House, we have a biblical community. We're looking at, spoiler alert, um, something called the Almond Grove, where we're going to hopefully um, facilitate a, a school, um, a place to gather for uh, the Shabbat, feast days. Or there, or these other th- We're talking community here. We're talking second generation. You know, when you think about the... Um, disciples when you think about Yeshua you know Yeshua come from Nazareth if there was a saying in the Bible can anything good come from Nazareth the disciples had this edge to them you know he was he was chosen that way he was commoners he was he was, he was he was rough around the edges and my concern is is when we're talking second generation Christians if if that's the term you want to use second generation believers third generation believers I'll be honest with you you know, I've met a few generations down the line of believers and, and, and it's hard to be relatable because these guys don't necessarily have have had certain exposure, you know, to to, to, to make them relatable in certain and that that that's my fear. So I guess it's trying to find that balance of like, okay, we're talking second generation here. How can we simulate environments with positive stress without the trauma? And I think Again, if you want to use sports, you can. But I think this, what we're seeing here with the academy, is the ideal scenario to um, simulate that stress of fear, courage in another man's face, but but without the trauma, with a mentor a hand, with a coach a hand. And I'm not saying that this is what we're trying to do. We're setting up an academy. Uh, and, no, no, and, no, but I, I think you're, you're very, you're raising a really important um, conversation in the sense that, like you say, if you're talking about generational uh, growth, if you're talking about um, families and fellowships and churches, uh, building uh, communities together and, and sharing lives together, uh, it's important that we actually establish these, like uh, have this discourse of saying, well, I, I feel this way and I feel that way and h- how do we uh, navigate this because it's, these are really serious um, this is actually really serious um, uh, principles we're talking so um, yeah I think that's that just highlights the importance of being able to like have this conversation before we uh, get to maybe bigger um, uh, yeah bigger obstacles in the future yeah thanks brother um, yeah there's you know I'm not saying I've got all the answers and um you know, I think if the, if if there was any um, side of caution for the listeners online, it would be you know, um, don't be so dog dogmatic either way. You know, um, it, it, you know, test this for yourself. Search the scriptures yourself. Um, be a Berean in your own world. Look, look at examples that are that are being used in, in in real life and to see because this is, you know. It, in a, in a sense, we're rediscovering a lot of these things and um, what, what we're looking at here. So I hope for the viewers that this has um, piqued interest. I'm sure it's going to be a, a very interesting topic of debate. And look, it's okay 
to agree to disagree. This is what makes us human. We're all unique. We've all got our own perspectives and backgrounds and, 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 and viewpoints. Uh, and that's healthy. If we all agreed, it would be a cult and it would be mad. <laughs> and boring. <laughs> and boring. So yeah, I, I just hope for the listeners today, I've just I've just given other perspective on this. Um of 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 what could be in the Bible and um not 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 I guess to, to label everything as look this is sin because we see um that the, the these issues going um all throughout all throughout different sports and football and tribalism and these things. So yeah, I, I think I think that might be a good time unless you've got any more questions no, you want to grill no, me anymore. No, no, I I think um uh I think there there'll probably just be there will probably be um, enough coming off the back of this conversation. Uh, I really appreciate uh, again uh, you putting yourself out there in that respect. Uh, I think we, we've we've gone into depth in terms of uh, you know how that can be compromising in certain respects. So I appreciate you you bringing what you brought. Um, do all the stuff, like subscribe. And specifically comment. Um, I have to say thank you to all those that have been commenting uh, on the uh, on the podcast and the uh, after hours. Uh, I personally read all the comments, um, and uh, it's just amazing to see that um, uh, that relationship grow in that area. But um, I think particularly with topics like this, it is it is great to to get that in, in encouraged uh, discourse going on. Uh, I'm really uh, interested and. In, uh, excited to see what the um, r- response will be, positive and negative, and all the rest of it. Um, but with with that being said, I just thank you once again for taking the time to uh, to listen. Um, we really appreciate that. And um, yeah, uh, again from from our house to yours, uh, it's been the upper room. Shalom, lots of love. Shalom.